Okay, I'm back. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm back. Hang it. Into there. It's so it's so amazing, you know. Uh, the way you can just kind of sometimes just do a little brushing. It'll stiffen the edge enough with antler and with obsidian where you can take a flake. I need to start paying attention to the balance of this piece though. When I say balance, what I mean is the like the side view, the uh, the lateral symmetry or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you would call it. A little bit of gas cut still right there, right where I need it not to be. Dang it. Run all the way down to there. See, what, what I do is I touch it. You see me do this? I'm doing that to get the measure of where I want to swing because I want to swing a tiny bit further than that. So it's kind of like a spacer um, deal. I just go in a very tiny bit from where that is. And you can see, I mean, I'm almost hitting my finger. And that's intentional. It doesn't hurt if you hit your finger when you're coming downward with, uh, if you just barely catch your finger with the edge of like an antler billet, it doesn't hurt. Now you don't want the flake to get your finger. But if your finger is directly underneath the flake, the flake isn't going to get your finger. It'll get your other finger. Like, well, what does he mean by that? Well, I've said this before, but I never can remember how many times I've said something or how long ago. And I'm always concerned somebody will watch my video that hadn't watched the earlier videos. Where I always cut is I cut my ring finger in here. And the reason is because I have a tendency to not think when I hit obliquely and I'll drive, instead of hitting straight in on a flake, I'll hit a flake to where the flake tries to move sideways on me. And if I don't have enough pressure on it, it will move sideways. And when it moves sideways, it slides over and gets that ring finger. So what I ought to be doing is whenever I'm going to flake obliquely, I ought to be using the leather underneath because I can just take it like this and, and hold it and it won't cut me. But the feel and the ability to pull the flake and, and trap the flake and hold the flake with my regular finger is valuable to me and kind of important. So I feel like I'm at a disadvantage when I use the leather. As far as napping, but I'm at a big advantage as far as getting cut. So you thought that I was being a complete goof by missing all those times, but it ended up working out really well because I was a great thinning flake and it ran all the way over there and ran down a blanket. That, that was a really, really good flake, actually. I got a little twist in this, though. And this has turned all the way up, rolled all the way up, and it's way out here on this end, so you talk about dangerous. It don't get much more dangerous unless you make a dumbbell and then try and hit in the middle. Try 
trying to fix that uh, balance issue there. This is actually a tiny little speck of the original surface of the spool. Ha! Perfect! You can definitely swing a big billet and just barely catch something. That's not that big a problem, but the problem is the, the mass of the thing and decelerating it with your arm. That's not a good thing, but... Ooh, another flake that I love. Ooh, another flake I love. Dang. I might ought to become a flint napper. I'm really jinxing myself talking crap like this. I hope I don't break this piece now. Just, just as a revenge of the 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 napping. Well. Dump that stuff off your lap. No reason to get cut. Let me tell you what, the, uh, the support here is super, super critical. And uh, a piece of work like this wouldn't survive five minutes with this kind of hitting if it wasn't for the support. So you have been told it's like an almost guaranteed to fold it kind of situation if you don't have that edge held together and and be stopping all the downward bending forces with your hand. if I can do any pressure work with this billet. What do you think, huh? Well, let's try. Let's try a little bit of percussion billet pressure just to see if that's even possible. Yeah, looks like it is. <laughs> that ran to there. Right, we'll go up 
here first. Start on the end. When you hear the clicking, that's one flake coming off. When you hear crunching, that's the problem with this method. Because what I don't have is I don't have a sharp little point where I can take off one flake. I'm pushing in with just the edge of this thing. And I don't know exactly when the flake's going to release. So, that means I don't know when to let go of the pressure. That flake ran to there, another about an inch long. So it's kind of a different deal and you have to sort of <laughs> you say, well you act like you've done this before. Actually, I, I've done similar stuff because what I've done is I've done I've done some of this kind of attempted flaking with a vise and a rib bone and stuff. That we're into there. That's more than halfway. I mean, it does some good. And it's certainly <laughs> safer than percussion work. But it lacks the precision of being able to use a, a sharper. Sharper point. But one of the reasons I want to show you this is because a lot of people a lot of people never think in terms of using a square edge to pressure flake with. Well, there's living proof that you can do it because there's a whole row of pressure all along there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. And of course, like I say, I'm not good with this stuff. <laughs> but if you if you go online and watch YouTube and watch lint napping tips, <laughs> and watch how he does his <laughs> non-abrading edge stiffening for like on his Sloan Dalton series, etc. You will come to understand that there's more than one way to do edge preparation. Especially when you're using antler. However, I think I also said that I've seen him do it on a point that he was doing for me as a demo.
where you did one side of a Dalton, one edge of a Dalton with antler. And then the other edge with copper, with my copper, and no abrading with a stone on either one. And the copper side looked as good and worked as good as the antler side and did not have steps or failures so it really is kind of all about having the experience level to judge when an edge has been stiffened enough to hold up barely long enough to take a flake and then being decisive and quick enough and know enough about the angle to where you you put your point on that edge at an angle that makes it not fail until the last possible moment and you go quickly with your with your flake to where it kind of it was gonna fail but it, it it waited too long you know it failed right after it's on the tarp kind of deal it's hard to explain but it works and I discovered a long time ago that it works and it does you know I, I talk about not doing some of the crap that I'm doing so it's kind of bad but this is reverse napping day sort of where I'm telling you the wrong way to do stuff that that works it's a balance issue time is it? I got a little splinter in my finger. I can feel it in my hand. Okay, I'm back. back. <laughs>